Hello and welcome to Northwest Indian News. I'm Carissa P. Pudgobin, a Tulalip Tribal member. Estuaries are wetlands where salt water from the ocean meets fresh waters from the uplands. These areas are vital salmon habitat and important to native culture. In Marysville, Washington, the Tulalip Tribes are leading a project to restore 400 acres of the Quillute Estuary. NWIN's Shanoa Henry brings us the story. At the turn of the century, the Quilu estuary was diked and drained to create farmland. Over time, the land naturally transformed into an ecological desert, leaving a legacy of invasive weeds and poor habitat. Today, thanks to the leadership of the Tulalip tribes and the dedication of numerous agencies and partners, a celebration was held to break ground on the restoration of the Quilu estuary. This could not have happened without everybody working hard together and trying to find ways to create solutions instead of finding ways to keep the obstacles in place. And uh, it takes real team building for that to happen. Yeah. Although we've been working on this project for almost 20 years, uh, today was just to kind of celebrate the fact that we're really able to break ground and really start on the construction of the project. After the construction is complete, they'll be um, breaching the levee or, or poking holes in it, if you will, and that'll allow the salt water from Puget Sound to flow up the Snohomish River um, into the Quilute Estuary, restoring really the processes that allow that estuary to function and provide support for fish and wildlife. Yeah, so we're looking out here to the main project area. Um, this area will be subject to uh, tidal influence. With the levee breach here, that'll allow uh, Puget Sound Chinook as well as other anadromous salmon to access not just the 400 acres here, but also 16 miles of spawning habitat farther up Allen and Jones Creek. Once that dike is breached, we'll see salmon utilizing these habitats the very next season. When you compare this to a project like the Nisqually River estuary uh, restoration work, and they saw salmon returns in the very next year using habitat that hadn't been used for decades. Besides the benefits for fish, there's benefits for tribal culture as a whole. Uh, you know, a lot of the vegetation we use for different purposes, whether it's basketry or even some of our foods and medicines, are wetland plants, and including estuarine wetland plants. So we'll be able to produce more of the plants that our tribal members need for their traditional practices. And a lot of these plants are getting harder to find and, uh, and uh, we also have a hard time getting access to some of them because of private ownership. This is a large, um, complicated and important project and it really began with the vision of the Tulalip tribes uh, 20 years ago. So, um, you know, from vision through planning to reality, um, it takes a while. We spent a lot of time working with the neighbors, uh, the residents and the businesses in the area, helping them understand what the project was about, and then also understanding what we were gonna need to do to accommodate their needs. It's a legacy for future generations. We're gonna learn from this. We're gonna figure out how to continue to balance competing needs for the land, restore salmon, still protect valuable agricultural land, and provide for recreational opportunities in a part of the world where the population is increasing and where the pressure on our limited natural resources continues to increase. I think the main thing that I'm excited about is to see how many people attended the event today. And I think that that also really signifies how we're gonna make more projects like this happen in the future. We have to be able to work together, and this, is a, this project's a great demonstration of how we can do that. If we hope to kind of make a dent in the global environmental degradation that we're, we're dealing with right now, it's these kinds of uh, multi-agency, multi-stakeholder projects that are gonna have the biggest effect. You know, we really started out as a partnership and kept going in that direction. After almost 20 years of planning, it's just great to see the, the actual construction work beginning. For Northwest Indian News, I'm Shanoa Henry. Coming up next, we'll visit a financial education course that is empowering people to make positive changes in their lives. I saw a lot of applicants who wanted to purchase a home, but they didn't understand why they weren't chosen because they couldn't understand their, their credit scores, 
or they couldn't understand their, their spending patterns. Washington Indian tribes are investing in the environment. The Nisqually tribe has undertaken the restoration of the Nisqually River Delta. The goal of the project is to remove all the dikes, reflood the estuary, and bring back, helping back the salmon runs. The Delta is a huge piece of our environmental efforts. So we feel this really deep internal um, desire to keep the river as well as these surrounding prairies in the best shape possible. The suicide rate of Native Americans is 25% higher than the national rate. Today is just another day. The day I think about you. The day I remember your laugh. The day I remember your sense of humor. Why were you so sad? What made you hurt so much? Why didn't you call? Why didn't I see your signs? Your pain may be gone. But mine just started. No one said life was easy. There is help. There's hope. Reach out to someone. Reach out to me. Reach out to me. Reach out to me. A person commits suicide every 40 seconds. So please get help. That's what it's in. Be strong and live life. The Muckleshoot Tribe is providing its members an opportunity to create positive change in their lives. They're offering financial education courses that are making a powerful difference in the community. Wayne Messer has the story. Muckleshoot Housing, this is Lisa. The Muckleshoot Housing Authority wants to increase the percentage of qualified applicants for the tribe's various housing programs. They also want to help members improve their financial stability. In 2013, the Housing Authority, in partnership with financial expert Chris Smith, developed a comprehensive curriculum that specifically addresses a range of financial topics that impact tribal members' lives. Their combined efforts resulted in Muckleshoot, Money Skills for Life, two six-hour classes that are a mixture of lecture, group discussions, and Q&A. We saw a lot of applicants who wanted to purchase a home, but they didn't understand why they weren't chosen because they couldn't understand their, their credit scores or they couldn't understand their, their spending patterns. And they also didn't know that if they had to build a credit score, how to do that. And then also just purchasing a new home, how they would need to set money aside for the mortgage, the taxes, and what other upcoming expenses might happen or what they might need. In my 20s, I didn't really consider it because I wasn't really, I guess, grounded. This course has made an impact on my life and I will be taking more of an active role in my family's budgeting, I guess, whereas before I would just defer to my wife. And for my children, I want to teach them some of the things that we learned in here because even though I didn't grow up here, I, don't, I didn't know much about the uh, trust funds and the situations, uh, my children will face those challenges. And not having that experience myself, I would like to be able to give them some of that information so they can make better choices when it comes time. I was never taught how to save money. When I get it, I was just out spending it. <laughs> you know, I enjoy spending money. Uh, so it was the teaching me how to save right now and especially at this time buying a new home um, and not having anything in savings and how important that was. In December 2013, a graduation ceremony was held to honor course participants and to acknowledge the time and effort they put into mastering important life skills. The people that are in the class are already conscientious, they're already hardworking, they're already responsible. All they're missing is just key specific bits of knowledge. And a lot of the knowledge they're missing is the same type of knowledge that everybody is missing, like how those darn 401k programs actually work. But if you have somebody explain that to you and take you past all the unfamiliar jargon, those things can actually become pretty easy to figure out. Our beliefs 
you're only, you only live day to day, so you don't really think about, you know, you're not guaranteed tomorrow. So um, I didn't really save a whole lot, you know, but after this class, finding out there are options and, and to look to the future, I've made a lot of changes within my own financial situations to look out for my financial future and to give all these teachings to my children. When a family learns financial stability and learns how they can make the best financial decisions for their family, they can pass it on to their children. When the whole family can get involved, it helps the family become stable. They don't need to wonder where the money's gonna come from because they put it into a plan. So when the parent and the grandparents learn how to make good financial decisions, that's helped the whole family make the decisions as a whole and also helps their children as they stabilize and breaks the cycle of poverty. With a small amount of financial information, people can transform their lives from feeling powerless and scared to feeling confident they're building a stable, secure future for their families and contributing to a healthier and stronger community. For Northwest Indian News, I'm Wayne Messer. Next, we'll hit the gridiron with the Puyallup Nation Kings. Last year, this field had been completed. Council was uh, supporting us. They got Emerald Queen involved to help sponsor the team financially. That way we can get pads, um, helmets, and jerseys to start the team out. For me as a council member, it's tremendously exciting to have an organized semi-pro team to provide healthy activities for our adults. That story and more on this episode of Northwest Indian News. Washington's Indian tribes are investing in health care. The Jamestown Sklalem tribe is expanding their health care clinic to meet an ever-growing community need. Quality health care of our people, of our citizens, Indian and non-Indian alike, is essential for our future. This new 35,000 square foot clinic will provide medical services and be open to the general public. Tribal governments are investing millions of dollars each year across our state to improve health and dental care in our communities. That's the bottom line for us, is, is quality health care. We have our own way of thinking. We think sustainability is nothing new. We think justice is older than any government. We think we can grow radishes on the moon. We think the war against diabetes is fought on the basketball court. We think the same berries we pick today should be here for another seven generations. We think education is for the mind and the spirit. We think Indian. Help tribal college students preserve their way of thinking. Washington's Indian tribes are investing in education. In Auburn, the Muckleshoot tribe just opened a new state-of-the-art $40 million school for up to 500 students in grades K through 12. The tribe has made an investment in, in the Muckleshoot people, not just into facilities, but into the, the people to gain an education. We want our children to be able to succeed in life. We want them to be able to compete with anyone in the world and achieve whatever they need to in their lives. Welcome back to Northwest Indian News. Based out of the Puyallup Reservation, the Puyallup Nation Kings is a semi-pro football team playing in the Western Washington Football Alliance. After a successful 2013 inaugural season, NWIN's Robert Watson was there for the Kings' first workout of the 2014 campaign. Today marks the first day of a long journey to meet the expectations and goals of the Puyallup Nation Kings and their growing fan base. As a whole, these men will sacrifice their blood, sweat, and tears in pursuit of the ultimate goal, a championship, while representing the Puyallup Nation with honor and class. Today's workout, uh, Coach Rambo's out here. He's going to actually run uh, 
an actual football practice. So you'll see, uh, as you can see the players behind me, they're doing um, active stretching and they'll be doing four stations of agility drills and then uh, you'll actually get to see some players and some of their talent and what they can offer for the team. It's pretty much the start of a new year, so we have uh, new practices. This is our first actual large practice kind of tryout that we're uh, kind of testing the waters and see if we want to take on any new people. You know, we still have a lot of existing people from last year that want to play, so uh, we want to make sure we have competition this year and uh, even give the people that played last year a run for their money, so hopefully we can uh, definitely uh, be a better team this year. The position I'm going out for is uh, running back. I heard about the Kings from my cousin who played for them a little bit last year, and I heard it was only 18 up league, and back then I was only 17, so I came out this year. I've always had a passion for football, and it's just been something I love to do, and that's what makes me want to play for the Kings. The Kings became possible last year uh, when a group of friends, myself, uh, Archie Cantrell, and Joe McLeod, uh, just decided we wanted to play some semi-pro football, and we thought maybe we'd put our own team together. The first step we had to take in forming this team would be uh, just finding a league to play in. You know, not, not every league around here is open to accepting new teams, so... Uh, Luckily, we contacted the uh, Western Washington Football Alliance, and they were uh, lacking teams, so they were willing to take us on as an, uh, an expansion team. Last year, this field had been completed. Council was uh, supporting us. They got Emerald Queen involved to help sponsor the team financially. That way we can get pads, um, helmets, and jerseys to start the team out. For me as a council member, it's tremendously exciting to have an organized semi-pro team to provide healthy activities for our adults. In Indian country, you have a high um, presence of diabetes and heart disease. So having this team encourages members of our community to, to get active, to engage in exercise and uh, participate in sports. It's just great all around uh, physical activity for, for our community. You know, so it's important to me because just, you know, what it's brought together as a, as a tribe, you know, it's like we, we got people coming together getting healthy, doing something positive, you know, finding a separate, another way to take out our aggressions. You know, we have such a problem on our reservation with alcohol abuse and drug abuse and stuff like that. It's just, it feels real good to, to kind of give something back, you know, and, and be part of something that's, that's positive. This is a great thing to give them something to do. And we're here and we're all together, you know, that keeps us out of uh, doing drugs and alcohol, I believe. And it's a good community for everybody. As a tribe member, it's great because it gives us, like, tri not, tri not just tribe members, but other people in the community the opportunity to come play football. Because for me, I thought I was done with football, but then, as you can see, the tribe gave us another opportunity to keep playing football because that's something I like to do. I, I believe the, the, the community has embraced the team in a way that every community embraces their home team. You know, this is, a, again, back to the inaugural year of the Puyallup Nation Kings. Um, people have a sense of pride in Puyallup tribal athletics. And so I, I believe the community has embraced them and uh, it's just a growing fan base. Our goal for this team is to, is to establish, establish that philosophy of football and, and then play championship style football with a good attitude and class. And because we are representing the Puyallup tribe, I remind our players and coaches that all the time that there's, there's always eyes on us, whether it be young or our elders. So uh, we always have to hold ourselves uh, to the highest regard. We get better and better. We get better and better. So we can't be beat. We can't be beat. Won't be beat. Won't be beat. And he's on me. One, two, three, three. The Puyallup Nation Kings have a long road ahead of them. With hard work, dedication, and the support of the Puyallup people, their goals are all but possible. For Northwest Indian News, I'm Robert Watson. The Puyallup Nation Kings' hard work and determination paid off in the 2014 season. With the support of their fans, the Kings finished the regular season with an unbeaten record of 11-0. To stay up to date with all things Kings, be sure to follow them on the team's Facebook page. You can also follow them on KLAY 1180 AM, the official Kings football station. Visit nwin.tv where you can view every episode of Northwest Indian News on demand. Once that dike is breached, we'll see salmon utilizing these habitats the very next season. When you compare this to a project like the Nisqually River estuary uh, restoration work, and they saw salmon returns in the very next year using habitat that hadn't been used for decades. You can also watch NWIN and other native programming at TulalipTV.com.
Coming up next, we'll celebrate Native American Heritage Month. The Native community needs to be heard. And all I can say is, like, as a youth or as an adult, doesn't matter how old you are, get involved. Don't spend time thinking, oh, I wish I would have gotten involved. Spend time thinking, how much more involved can I get? To my tribe, I'm more than a student. I'm an example that it's possible to get an education. Education can end poverty, violence, and health issues on the res. On the reservation, tribal students find ways to turn their education into an entire tribe's education. Even when only 5% of Indians on the reservation, only 5% of Indians can afford to go to college. If I do nothing, 25,000 people will continue to live in poverty. I will help 2 million people educate themselves. I'll keep 173,000 people from losing their sacred home. Hey! Well, culture is important to the Suquamish people because it's an honoring of our ancestral ways and traditions and the ways that have been part of this landscape for thousands of years. So for us, we're honoring our ancestors. We're also building for our future, for our future generations, our youth. You are welcome to come ashore. And yes, our culture is alive. I couldn't be more proud of the Suquamish. Welcome back to Northwest Indian News. At the start of the 20th century, efforts began to gain one day of recognition for Native Americans' significant contributions in the United States. We now celebrate the entire month of November as Native American Heritage Month. Sherry Macy has more. Western Washington University Native American Student Union organizers are commemorating Native American Heritage Month with a celebration. They've invited speakers, tribal members, and communities to participate in building bridges of understanding and friendship. The truth is the greatest weapon we can have. Speakers have been invited to talk on several angles of discussion and present issues and information concerning sovereignty, women's rights, and the environment. This is a really important event just because it highlights all those issues that are still going on, um, mostly in Canada, but we still have a lot of these issues in the U.S. And I think it's a revival period for us. Um, I feel like Western hasn't seen Native American culture in a couple years, and it's glad to see that come back. And that's what I think is the great thing about college and the great thing about community colleges is you can actually get involved. Whereas I feel like in the world, it's a lot more difficult to be accepted. I Don't Know More is a reaction to the increasing deplorable conditions that are occurring in our First Nation communities and within urban settings, um, basically mar to all marginalized people in Canada. And it spread out to um, the United States and then globally because I think all people who are um, experiencing the traumas that we have as Indigenous people and marginalized people are starting to get, we're too cornered in and this is just bound to happen. I think what I Don't Know More has done is it's touched the hearts of people for many reasons. Um, people who are not usually involved in politics or in any kind of um, rallying or protesting have become involved. People who don't normally get out there on the streets are out there, which is something that is we're really happy about. So that means to us that it's touched them somehow and that there's a need for it. There isn't really one area that we suggest people focus on. We do ask that people look at the defense and protection of land, water, air rights, to not be silent, to use um, different communications, different mechanisms, different actions to create um, 
enough noise so that we can be heard and we don't lose sight of why we're doing what we're doing. And when we look at the things that we need to solve as a society, when we need to find ways to protect the environment to stop climate change, we have to respect the values of the people who have been here protecting the place, making it thrive and thriving along with it for millennia. We have to recognize that protecting this place means protecting each other, respecting the life ways that people have had. When here in the Northwest we talk about trees, we talk about salmon. Salmon represent the entire ecosystem that supports all of us. One of the things that we can do is to integrate some of those native ideas into our regulations, into our laws. I think a lot of people don't know that the U.S. Constitution was heavily influenced by the Iroquois. Well, the State Environmental Policy Act is also influenced by many of the tribal values here in the Northwest, but there's much more we can do to integrate those values into our systems and our regulations. We try to do the best we can to have this event and have other events to bring Native Americans closer together and to reunite those ties that have slowly kind of disappeared throughout time. The Native community needs to be heard. And all I can say is, like, as a youth or as an adult, doesn't matter how old you are, get involved. Don't spend time thinking, oh, I wish I would have gotten involved. Spend time thinking, how much more involved can I get? And who can I talk to and who can I meet to get me more involved? Because you're never too involved. If anything, you're just more passionate. From the environment to treaty rights, this Native Heritage Month celebration reveals the vitality of our culture and the importance of actively working hard to preserve it for future generations. For Northwest Indian News, I'm Sherry Macy. I'm Carissa Peapud Gobin, and I hope you've enjoyed the stories we've brought to you today. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time on Northwest Indian News.